Well, it's been nearly 10 years since I started living in vehicles. And my first home on wheels was a 2006 Honda Element. I lived in it for a little bit less than a year. And when I sold it, I did not make a video about it, but the build and the post on my website is still one of the most visited and one of the most commented posts on my website. So I thought I'd quickly do a little rundown of the build that we did back in uh, 2014. So when I was moving into my vehicle, uh, van life was just kind of starting off getting popular. There were some blogs, some posts, some people that I could follow, but there really wasn't a lot of information and not many people had been doing Honda Elements. So some of the build that we did uh, ended up being our own creative ideas. Um, I had the Honda Element. It was my first vehicle when I moved to Santa Barbara, California. It's a 2006 all wheel drive. And as much as I wanted to live in a different kind of camper, I test drove a Rialto, checked out some other ones. I already had the Element, so it made the most sense to just move into that. I drove it back to Indiana. Uh, my stepdad and, and family there are very good with woodworking and welding. So that was going to help a lot with this build. The main parts of this Honda Element are the fact that we took the back seats out, made a sleeping platform, had a fold down bed that I'll talk about, but everything that I owned fit in the Honda. And as I accumulated a little bit of uh, outdoor and adventure gear, I did end up putting a, a rocket box, Yakima rocket box on the rack on the top. So taking a look at the build, the front of the Honda Element looked about the same. I would say that the only thing that really changed was the door pocket on the passenger side ended up being my library. Otherwise, everything was pretty normal in the front and you wouldn't really know it was a camper until you started to look into the back. So as you open up the suicide doors, which that was one great thing about living in a Honda Element is just the accessibility and the uh, massive side doors on both sides. You can look into the back and see where we took the rear seats completely out and built a sleeping platform with storage. We used three two by fours spanning the vehicle. The first in the front was held by two wooden legs. The middle was the part that was directly bolted to the frame. And the rear was also held by two wooden legs that we specifically positioned so that I could still access the rear spare tire, which is in the bottom of the back of the element. The platform was just particle board, plywood, on the driver's side, it was it was short, so I had a little bit of space behind the driver's seat. The passenger side was where I was going to be sleeping, so that was my bed. And then we created a way that at night I could pull the passenger seat fully forward and do a little fold out piece that would make the bed fully six foot long. And when I lived in it first, I just ended up using a few old glider mats from my mom's uh, porch swing. So it already smelled like outdoors even before I was out camping every single weekend. On the driver's side of the sleeping platform, that was my storage, pretty much my closet. The three bins, we created three shelves around three cloth bins. So it was specifically built for those cloth bins that held all of my clothing, my running clothes, my professional clothes. I was still working full time. I was also the youngest club president of the Rotary Club of Santa Barbara while I was living in this on the streets. So I still had to wear a suit every Friday. So I created a custom closet. We did an all thread bar across it to kind of also support the storage bins. So the majority of my storage was underneath the bed platform. We built it specifically so that on the passenger side, I could fit my Appalachian Trail backpack with a bunch of outdoor gear stored in it. I also had a rolling suitcase, which was mostly just shoe storage and maybe odds and ends. The driver's side under bed storage uh, consisted of three plastic totes. One was all of my tools that was typically in the middle because I didn't need to access them very much. I also had a tote full of running gear and outdoor gear, hammocks, that sort of thing. And the one in the rear was my kitchen. So that would hold all of my cooking gear as well as whatever food I had on board. Uh, very often my tailgate ended up being my kitchen. Although sometimes in Santa Barbara, I was able to pull down to one of the beachfront parks and use a picnic table. The Honda Element was a fantastic incognito stealth camper. I did cut Reflectix for each window, including the front windows, and then I sprayed uh, spray adhesive on them and put black fabric on one side. So during the day, I could switch them around, use them to keep the vehicle cool, and at night I could put the black facing out, and really you could barely tell that anyone was in there. This model of Honda Element also had a full moon roof in the back, so the way that it worked is I could remove the glass completely, and whether I was sleeping in town or out camping, I could just lay back and from my bed be looking straight up at the stars. Now, as much as I really did enjoy this Honda Element camper uh, and we put a lot of work into it, I didn't live a full year in it before I kind of, I guess, upgraded. I found a 1985 Volkswagen Westfalia camper van 
all original complete camper build and this is what moving day looks like when you're living in a vehicle uh, i drove both vehicles down to the beach in santa barbara and within about an hour i had everything i owned moved from the honda element to my new volkswagen van since 2014 i've been living off and on in vehicles typically it's about six months at a time in north america and then i will often take my backpack and travel around the world for different amounts of time but it started with the honda element i lived for three years in the volkswagen vw van i finally sold that for a 2002 toyota tacoma and lived in just a, a camper shell for one year and now i'm currently on the same 2002 tacoma in a slide-in pop-up truck camper but looking back on the honda element i really did enjoy the ability to be so stealthy that it was small and very dependable and it was a great vehicle over the years since I lived in the Honda Element, I've seen a lot of great builds, especially recently on social media. Um, there are a lot of people doing some really cool things with small vehicles, especially the Honda Element. It's so boxy, it's so easy to build out. And again, they're so, so dependable. So still to this day, one of the most popular blog posts on my website is the build of the Honda Element. I get questions fairly often about the build. So if you're looking for some ideas on the Honda Element, again, I, like I said, there's a lot of other people doing really cool things, but I'm always open to answer some questions about my build, what I learned, what I would do again, most importantly, what I wouldn't do. So if you have any questions about living in a Honda Element, feel free to send me a, a note or drop me a line. All right, well, that wraps up my Honda Element Home on Wheels video. I'm here with my current home, Turk the Truck Camper. We're wrapping up about three plus months in Baja, Mexico getting ready to head back to the States. So looking forward to some more road trips pretty soon. Maybe we'll see you on the road out there somewhere.